what is up everybody this is Nia Pierce editor-in-chief at sheattack.com and I am met with my right hand woman and my left hand woman I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves Erica go ahead and introduce yourself let the people know who you are and what you've been what you've been gaming on what's going on you guys this is Erica uh, I am the co-manager at she attack what have I been gaming on I mean the game of the year what else freaking Neo I've been all about that Neo life right now I've heard so many good things about that game. It, it's it's great. It's so good. We could talk about it if you want. But yeah, sure, <laughs> I, sure. I might go on too long, though. No, but just to sum it up, so far, it, it's it's really good. If you like Dark Souls, you like Bloodborne, you're going to love this game. Um, just the combat alone is phenomenal. So I'm enjoying it. That's all I've really been playing, though. So uh, not a long list over here. But yeah, I'm excited yeah. for this episode. Let's get into it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Jilly, so why don't you go ahead and tell the people who you are and what you've been playing. What's going on, everybody? Y'all already know who it is. It's your favorite gamer girl, uh, Jaleesa, a.k.a. Conqueror 7-Eleven. Um, I am the field manager, uh, one half of the team lead. Um, and what have I been playing? I've been playing a couple of joints. Uh, Y'all do know I play my sports game, so I've been on 2K and I've been on Madden Heavy. Especially since last week was the Super Bowl, um, so I got a lot of football in there. But also, I've been playing um, For Honor, the uh, actual open beta. I've been playing a lot of that, and um, also I played a lot of uh, Ghost Recon that came out. I think it was last weekend. Mm-hmm. They had up for a couple of days. I'm a little salty. I didn't get invited to the beta. I signed up, but I didn't get in. Oh yeah, I got. I mean, I was a little salty. I didn't get in the injustice beta. So. Oh, me neither. But I didn't yeah, sign I, up, so I can't. I didn't even know there was a, a, a sign up for that, so I can't be too salty. But yeah, it was a sign up for that one, and I, I didn't get in. So it was. I got into Ghost Recon, and I'm, I'm gonna get that game. Um, but I've been playing Ghost Recon, um, Wildlands, um, For Honor, Madden, and 2K, and uh. One more. No, I'm Final Fantasy. I'm on the last chapter of Final Fantasy, so I'm about to beat that game. That's what's up. That's what's up. As far as me, as far as what I've been playing, I have been playing Gigantic. If you guys have been uh, following She Attack for a while, you know that we actually had a chance to interview Motiga, the developers who are making Gigantic, and uh, it's a really fun game, a really fun uh, MOBA, and it has crossplay between. PC and uh, console. It's on the Xbox One and, and PC right now through Windows 10. And it'll also be available through Arc later on. Um, really fun game. Um, I've also been playing Rainbow Six Siege. My boyfriend bought that um, a couple of days ago because it's actually been on sale on uh, line. I think it was on sale for about $15 or $20 or something like that. Like there's like a special promotion or something going on with Rainbow Six and and Ubisoft and all of that. So I was able to get that. And Rainbow Six Siege is a lot of fun, man. Like, it's yeah. not like- Too, they had an open, a free weekend. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah it, 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 was, it was on sale during the free weekend. So I was able to, that was the promotion. So I was able to get a hold of that. And I really like the strategicness, if that's even a word for a uh, rainbow six it's not like you're you know the shooters of today where you're just running a gun and like there's actually some thought that goes into the situations that you encounter within the game so i think that's pretty dope and um also i've been playing mobile games because you guys know that fire emblem heroes is on ios and android right now and it is a surprisingly good mobile game um and i also downloaded some little casual like pet game and i've been having fun with that it's called Paka Pet Village and like my dad my pet is probably dead right now because I just thought about it I haven't checked on it since like yesterday <laughs> so uh R.I.P. question mark I'm calling PETA <laughs> calling PETA on me I just thought about that just now like holy crap my pet I haven't checked on my pet since like yesterday or maybe even before then I told you, like, I work on a weekend, so I get really sidetracked. So, yeah, I guess it's a good thing that it's a digital pet and not an IRL pet. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go ahead and delve into these topics. So, uh, the first topic on the docket today is the topic of E3. So, apparently, E3 is going to be opening to the public for the first time ever. 
and I'm reading a byline by GameSpot.com. It says that 15,000 tickets for E3 2017 will go on sale this coming Monday, February the 13th. So that's tomorrow, uh, you guys, or today, depending on when I upload this video. And so the way that it's gonna work is that um, they're gonna be priced at $250 or $150 as a part of an early bird discount available on February the 13th. Tickets provide access to the show floor, panel discussions, and other events from Tuesday through Thursday of E3 week. The ES ESA will partner with games media veteran Jeff Keeley to provide attendees with access to special benefits associated with Keeley's own E3 programming, such as developer interviews and more. Full details on this and other elements of E3's new public plans will be announced in the coming weeks. So just to kind of give you guys like a quick, my brief quick thoughts about this is that um, it sounds like they are trying to turn E3 into PAX. And I can guarantee you that the reason why they're doing this is because PAX makes money from attendees and getting um, people to buy those tickets to get inside. And um, I, I know that there's a lot of people that are kind of uh, upset about this because it makes it harder for you if you are, especially like if you're like a like a small site like we are or like a medium um, site, you know, getting into E3 is kind of one of those things that you have to grind for. And in this case, pretty much everybody in the amount can go to E3. <laughs> and uh, um, it makes it a little bit harder to uh, get content for your organization. So, you know, I've seen a couple of those arguments as well, but in my opinion, I think that it could be beneficial for this to open up to the public because when it gives E3, the people who make E3 more money, because, you know, it seems like here lately, a lot of uh, video game companies have been taking it upon their own selves to get the word out about their content. And I don't want to say that E3 is irrelevant. I don't think that E3 is irrelevant, but because technology is pro progressing in such a way, it's a lot easier for like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo and all of these other third party companies to get the word out themselves, right? Like, it's just easier now. You know, back in the day, E3 was the place to get your gaming information if it wasn't like in a gaming gaming magazine and things like that. So um, to me, it's just the same difference. It's just now that they're gonna be getting money from it. <laughs> and um, you know, if you've been to any convention that allows regular attendees, whether there's PAX, there's CES, um, any Comic-Con, if you are a media personnel, you do have access to things that regular attendees do not have access to. And it seems like it's going to work the same way for E3. So just because you get to go to E3 as an attendee doesn't mean that you have access to all that E3 has um, to offer. But that's kind of my little thoughts about this. I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Jaleesa. Jaleesa, what do you feel about this? situation in particular i really don't know how to feel because as a person who's always been a gamer this is a dream come true for most like regular old gamers like me who are hardcore but not like that wasn't in the uh how can i say it wasn't in the media per se mm -hmm. if, if this were to would have happened four years ago i'd have been like hell yeah this is awesome this is great this is fantastic and then I realized, yeah, for somebody who's in the media, in which people really don't get that E3 really is a media event, it kind of feels kind of weird. I'm happy for people who actually will get to go, but it's kind of weird also for people who do get to go but think they're going to get all the perks. Yeah. Talking to all these different people, and they're going to get to play all these different games. In actuality, you ain't going to play everything because the lines are going to be freaking crazy. The lines are going to be crazier <laughs> than they already were. They're going to be crazier than they already were. Yes. Um, you're going to be in a line for about four hours to play one game. Right. Um, you, it's it's going to be ridiculous. So, I mean, I'm happy for people who actually will get tickets and actually do get to engulf in what E3 is. But for the people who feel like, oh, well, I'm going to get to talk to these people. I'm going to get to get into... um. The, uh, the Sony or Microsoft presentations, you might be a little disappointed. Yeah. You may not be in. Um, I mean, and even though PAX is like an attending event where anybody can go to, Jaleesa, even me and you, when we went to PAX 2015, like 
it was like that you know everybody has access to the show floor and everything but if you have like a media pass and you have like an appointment with certain you know developers and stuff you will go behind the scenes and do like the whole media thing so to me i feel like it's the same difference with an event like that you know like when we what was it borderlands pre-sequel when we went to go see that like that was a closed event the normal people didn't get to see that what we saw so it was so like what? yeah so it's so like the same I, difference it's a good thing and a bad thing it's it's good for people who aren't journalists who don't follow the stuff like we do because as a gamer e3 is a dream you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a place where it's like that top of the mountain when you get to e3 it, it, it nothing else matters yeah <laughs> but I, I agree with you julie so like I, you know if you're just a gamer you're not part of media this is a good thing like if this was five years ago i would have been like all for it but as media now technically we, we're a small site and considering the struggle we went through just to go in 2015 and only i could go i was the only person that could go so i know how it is there and how packed it is and all of that that's that's a whole other issue but um i don't know i guess i feel like we earned that spot like we really really worked hard for that spot right so, right I feel a certain kind of way. I don't mean to come off snobby or nothing like that at all. Like, I know some people like to think um, people who are negative about this, they're just snobby media, but that's not what I'm saying. It's like, we worked really hard to get there. And it was, you know, it's hard to get in as it is. So I'm I'm worried this might make it even more difficult. Right. There's just like, too many people. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing from people saying Yeah, this. and you know, small sites like us may have even a lesser chance now. That That's right, my right. worry. Um, but for, of course, just the regular fan, yeah, this is kind of like a PAX now. Um, it's going to be packed. I just want to advise everybody who's thinking about going, um, you might want to save your money for something like PSX. I feel like PSX has a way better show floor in terms of like for the fans. You're not going to wait as long in lines. You're going to have more access to other things. You're, everybody's all kind of at the same level because the media is still going to have their, like you said, they're still going to have their backdoor stuff. They're going to get backstage stuff or whatever um but that's just my thing like i'm torn on it like i I see where you know as a gamer it's it's cool but as small time media i'm not a big fan of it here's here's my thing though as far as the way that we go to these events and then we cover content and things like that i mean everything that is going to be shown at this presentation is more than likely going to be on the show floor so like, are we really missing anything? Like, are we really missing out on that much for um, if they were to open or they will be open this opening this? I didn't get a chance to go to the E3, but I've been to PAXs where I've gone as media. You know, I've seen everything that um, was on the show floor. I was able to cover it just like any old regular old attendee was able to cover it. But the difference is that because we have people who message us and let us know what's going on within their brand and their organization, we do get invited to these things. You know what I mean? Like we have people that we know that want us to come and do interviews and get exclusive um, materials and exclusive interviews and exclusive um, looks at their content aside from what they would probably offer a regular attendee. When me and Crystal went to PAX, it's PAX Prime. It's not PAX Prime anymore. It's PAX West, right? So when me and Crystal went to PAX West, what was it? Twenty, I think it was 2015 or 2016. One of them. I don't remember. We had um, a closed door event with Atari, and they showed us some Roller Coaster Tycoon, and we had a chance to get exclusive and extensive gameplay of that game. We were able to talk to the higher ups. Like we had a chance to meet the CEO of Atari. And I know that doesn't really mean a whole lot in, you know, 2016, 2017, but Roller Coaster Tycoon is still a really huge game. They have a really um, dedicated audience and a lot of people actually saw our interview with them and our gameplay with them. So, you know, there's things uh, that you still won't be able to see as a regular attendee. And I feel that Yes, al- allowing regular attendees to go makes it more difficult if you're trying to cover, but at the same time, if you're still able to get in as media, which it might be a little bit harder just depending on how they decide to do things for E3, whether you're going as media or you're going as an attendee, if you're going as media, you're still going to be able to do things that regular attendees would not be able to do. 
I guess that's kind of like my whole perspective on that. But I do understand where you're coming from, Erica, because I mean, it we have to work hard to get it to E3. Like we worked so hard and as a small site, you know, that is an accomplishment whenever you can work hard and be, you know, amongst the people to go like the IGNs and the game spots and all of them, you know? So, I mean, I, I get that, that side too. But at the same time, I feel like if you are media, you're still going to be able to have access to things that regular attendees won't. I'm with yeah. you on that. The only argument I'd probably make is that E3 is, is not PAX. Like, it's way harder to get, uh, like, behind the scenes stuff. Right. And there wasn't a lot of people reaching out to me. That could just be my own personal experience or because of our site. I have no idea. But I had to, like, really try to, like, track people down. Like, with Xbox, I was trying my hardest to get... Uh, Rod Ferguson for like an interview and that just did not happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like things like that. Of course, it's just a bigger stage. It's freaking E3. So it's like, yeah, of true. course, I expected that. I wasn't like feeling entitled like, oh, I need all these interviews. I didn't feel like that. It's just that was kind of my experience. I had to really kind of like figure out, OK, where can I find these people? What can I do to have a presence here? Like I had to really work hard. Right. But um. I wanted to uh, also say, like, as far as like it being packed and stuff, because it's really packed at freaking E3. Um, so adding fifteen thousand people to me, that's kind of a concern. I'm I'm curious how they're gonna manage that, because that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Tony. He's a friends of our, a friend of ours at, at the site. He he mentioned that maybe they should do uh, separate days, like have certain days for media. And then maybe on the weekend have it for you know the public. That's I think actually that's a good, good idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they should do that. I don't see why not because E3 is during the week, and they could have the public come in on, on the weekend. So yeah. I don't know. There's still maybe. a way that they could appease both sides. Right. So we'll just wait and see. They're experimenting. We'll see what happens. It's gonna yeah. be interesting. Yeah, that's that's definitely gonna be interesting. So let's go ahead and move on to For Honor. So go as you guys know, um, there was a closed beta for For Honor about a week or so ago, and then it became public on the 9th. I think today is the last day. So um, I'm gonna let Erica take the uh, stage on this one because I only have a, a little bit of experience with the For Honor beta. So Erica, how do you feel about the For Honor beta? Like, just give us a little bit of your thoughts about this game. Okay, let me let me see. How can I describe this game? Jalisa, you might have to help me. It's it's a very combat-based game. It's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing uh, where, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you wanna pick, you wanna pick and choose which way you're gonna block, which, you know, you have to kind of, feed off of your opponent and see what they're doing and it's a real str like a strategy kind of combat game like in a med medieval time uh, with vikings and like warriors and knights it's really cool it's a really awesome theme um the beta or yeah the beta i didn't play the most recent one because i was playing neo but i played the other ones and then i also got to play it at psx with jaylisa actually so wait, that's pretty cool we're both in here to talk about it but um, it's fun. I think it's fun as long as like you have friends to play with. And if you don't, you could always do the 1v1s, which is really fun as well. So I think if you're, if you're just into multiplayer, um, you'll have a good time with this game. But it also has a single player. So there's, a, there's enough here for any kind of gamer, in my opinion. It's just, for me, a kind of a bad release date because there's a lot of games coming out right now. Mm. So that's, that's really my only uh, thing that's keeping me from really diving yeah. into getting this day one. That's the interesting thing with new IPs that come around like ex existing games. It's like, there's always like this toss up of if it's gonna do well or if people are gonna to buy in. I guess that's the best mm -hmm. way to put that. So Jaleesa, you wanna go ahead and chime in? Like, what is your what are your thoughts on the For Honor beta? Um, I am enjoying the hell out of For Honor um, by myself or with friends. Um, it is a game that is not easily learned. Like you cannot just pick this game up and be good at it. You is a lot of different buttons and combinations of buttons, so it's gonna deter people because it deterred me. Um, it's a fun game, but if you're not willing to learn the uh, button layout, you're gonna be well mistaken. You ain't gonna like this game at all. Yeah, you can't just um, hack and flash. No, <laughs> you try to hack and slash, and you will get bodied. Um, <laughs> And it doesn't matter about what character, like it, it, like you can, you can say, oh well, I'm gonna pick this game up and, and just play it for five minutes and learn it. And that's that's not the type of game that it is. Um, like, like Erica said, it's kind of like rocks, uh, rock paper scissors. Um, for instance, like you have to hold R two 
to um to, like single shot a person like uh I think it's a what uh bloodborne is like that too where you put the, the uh thing on yeah, one person. like the heavy attack yeah you hold r2 then you have to either hold l1 or r1 which is a heavy attack or a low attack and then you have to uh press r1 um the analog stick the uh, right analog stick one way or the other to block into um counter or try to do another um try to get a, a hit on a person so it's a lot of different button combinations then you can start to uh uh do a whole lot of combinations within combinations to do uh execution moves and stuff like you can cut people's heads off cut their arms off like it's it's dope um there's a 1v1 mode 2v2 and then there's a 4v4 um, I've been playing mostly 4v4 because I like uh, Domination. Domination is really fun. Um, fun. Um, the customization in this game is pretty deep. Um, yeah. And then you get experience points for doing certain objectives. Like they'll tell you to do this and do that. Um, you can freaking uh, customize your character any way you want. Like uh, Erica was saying, you have Vikings, you have uh, regular knights, um, you have ninjas. Um, you fight with swords, axes, like it's a whole bunch of different types of ways to play this game. Right. Um, so that's awesome. I know I didn't really get a chance to play it because uh, for some reason betas always want to be on a weekend and I work on weekends. So like <laughs> I'm spending time downloading the game and then I'm, you know, it's like I don't, then I got to go to work, then I come back and then I got to take a nap because I've been at work all night, you know. So I got past the tutorial. And um, basically, just my short thoughts is that I do like uh, the mechanics of the game. I like how strategic it is. You really have to think about um, your moves before you make them. And even while, as far as me though, I'm not, you know, screaming to the hilltops about, you know, how much this game is awesome and stuff like that. I think that it's probably going to be one of those games I just kind of get down the line. I'm not really too interested in trying to get it day one. Um, but from what is there, it does seem like a lot of thought was actually um, put forth behind um the actual yep. combat itself but as for me i don't know it's i think it's kind of a not really my thing per se but maybe that's just because i didn't really get to do anything outside of the tutorial and I, I didn't really get to play all of those really fun um modes that you guys got to play so maybe oh, yeah, that's there's why a game in the game too i think they have a certain amount of days where you earn points for whichever clan you pick it's like certain mm -hmm. colors for certain clans that you pick at the beginning of the game and when you uh, win games and stuff like that and earn points, you earn points for your clan within the game, like in the whole community. And it's like, a, you know how I said, like, I think it's a civilization where you have a, a, a world and you take on certain parts of the world. Hmm. And whoever wins by the end of that certain day that it ends, you get points and stuff like that for your clan. Everybody that in the, that's in the community that's in that certain clan, they get like experience points. They'll get like maybe uh, like clothing or something like that, something customizable for their character. So I thought that was kind of cool too. That's yeah, awesome. I like that because awesome. you feel like you're like really a part of something, you know? It like makes you feel like different. you're actually like a soldier in like an army yeah. and stuff, right? It'll be like 13 yeah. hours, and they'll be like, mm -hmm. "Well, you got the it's a countdown at the top of the screen that lets you know that um, you have this amount of time to play as many games as you can to win points for your clan. And whoever wins, they get um, just win stuff." I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So now let's go ahead and move on to our last topic, and uh, it involves uh, Phil Spencer. Uh, some comments that he made on Twitter about how. 2017 will be a fun year for um, new IPs for the Xbox One. I'm gonna read a tweet that a fan sent to Phil on Twitter. And the fan said, will we see a new IP on Xbox this year or next year that wasn't mentioned before? So Phil Spencer then responded to the fan that Xbox One game shipping this year are different for us. Not Halo, first person shooter, gears led, New experiences with different IP will be a fun year. And so um, I don't really know how I feel about this. I guess that's great. I kind of expect to see stuff at E3 because 
Microsoft has already kind of set this precedent where they don't really announce things outside of E3. So I don't know. I, I guess that's kind of like whatever. That's like standard. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't really know how I feel about this. I mean, I was just going to say I agree. Like it's mm -hmm. it's uh, kind of expected. I yeah. Mean, new IPs, new Big Bang apps that they're going to have, especially for Scorpio. I would think they'd have like some kind of killer app. Mm -hmm. They should anyways. So I don't know. Jay Lisa, what do you think? Um, I was gonna say the same thing. It's kind of like a no-brainer. I uh, hope you do have new IPs. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> but I mean, I, they, they need them. Um, right. they, they haven't. They've been having a, a pretty good year since the last E3. But the Steam is kind of, I don't know. They're doing yeah. fine, but the PS4 is just doing a lot better. And um, when it comes to uh, games and stuff like that, I, I I keep hearing people who actually have all consoles is like. Xbox needs to show me something because January, February, March, and April, PlayStation has got games and we kind of don't. The yeah. only game that's coming out that they they know about that has a release date is Halo Wars 2. And everybody is an RTS fan. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's a game for that subject of the people who like that type of game, but for everything else, the, most people that I know, they really are like, we throw us a bone, <laughs> throw us something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's a little frustrating on the on the Xbox side because I have my Xbox One, but I haven't played it, and I don't even remember the last time I played it. It's just kind of sitting there, and you know, I want to play it. Uh, I'm looking forward to like a new Ori in the Blind Forest game. I'm hoping that comes. If that's not exactly a new IP, but I just want to see some games to get me excited and make me feel like this thing is worth having, you know. And, yeah. You're right. I mean, PS4, there's there's games dropping right now. It may have took a while. You know, there's some delays here and there, like for Horizon, as an example. Um, but now they're all coming. So everybody's looking to, to Microsoft like, hey, where's your answer for this? And for them, it's definitely seeming like it's going to be E3. And it's like, well, that's a few months away. So it's frustrating at times because you're like you're wanting to look, you know, you want something new to get excited about, but it's just not coming. It's just not yeah. there yet. That's so, well, Microsoft, they're, they're, I understand why they do what they do, but I feel like the same thing with Sony is the same thing with Microsoft. I feel like they switch when it comes to when they want to bring their games out. And I, I understand why they do it, and then I don't understand, because it's like all these months in a year, we should have something else other than third party to play. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if it's small, big, large, it doesn't matter. Something. Because it, to me, you can put eight games out for me or me or even you Erica at least two or three of them you're gonna want to play mm -hmm, right? I think that's a great thing to have a variety where I can be like okay Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo have put these amount of games out and I have a lot to choose from yeah mm -hmm. that's a great thing and mm -hmm. I feel like with Microsoft they wait till E3 and I feel like waiting till E3 is cool what about the rest of the year? Yeah, that's that's really my thing. It's like, um, I don't really, um, I mean, I'm not as upset with Xbox as everybody else. I mean, there was a point in time when uh, I had first got my Xbox. And, like, that's all I was playing because I had, like, a lot of games to catch up on as far as Microsoft is concerned. I think that um, in relation from, like, Microsoft and Sony, I feel like uh, Microsoft had a lot of, like, dope exclusives that came out and I was still kind of waiting for Sony and uh, now Sony has some really dope games coming out and they're kind of coming out like rapid rapid fire you know um so I don't want to be one of those kind of people that's like oh Xbox ain't never got no games like they've had games it's just they haven't had any lately <laughs> so it's like mm -hmm. you're just trying to wait for the next time they're gonna you know bring something out and I think um a lot of it is because of the way that they announce their stuff you know they are one of the um, only ones of the big three right now that actually still wait for E3. <laughs> you know, Nintendo has their Nintendo Directs now and, you know, they're really, like, pumping out updates about what's going on with them on, like, Twitter and stuff. You know, Sony has PSX and they're not afraid to, like, throw up a trailer or talk about things on Twitter. But then here you have Microsoft who's always waiting for the next big stage and that's usually E3. So I think that um, a lot of people 
are just kind of over it. You know, we're in a stage and time where the internet is everything and everybody is always looking for the next bit of new information. And so if you're taking on this position to where you're only going to announce stuff at E3, that's going to frustrate people because you're yeah. you're depriving your fan base of any kind of announcements. People want to know what's going on with the device that they have and that's just point blank period you know what i mean I'm tired of seeing controllers <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm yeah honest. there are some xbox fans that i know who yeah. are they're like yo you talk about controllers more than you do some of the games that are coming out and, and a lot of that is because they wait for e3 it's like you know like e3 is if crazy, if if my i think that people would be less frustrated with microsoft if they talked more about what their studios were doing like right. you know like just make a tweet like hey we got such and such game coming you know or at least give us like a time frame like is it coming in q1 q2 q3 like give people some updates of what's going on because when you when you remain silent that kind of makes people look at their xbox like okay so when are you getting an update <laughs> you know like right. what's going on with you right now you know we don't know that's the thing though the thing with I, I this i'll say this generation with sony i feel like they're not afraid to tell people what's coming or give any type of a little bit of info we may get something as right little bit, we may get something about uh like they show god of war and then a couple months later now we we kind of get uh, a little bit more about God of War. They're saying, well, this is about God of War. Or right, and it doesn't have to be like huge updates. It could no, be like, it's... oh yeah, you are you guys looking forward to Crackdown Three? Right, here's like a couple of enemies from Crackdown Three. Look forward, yeah. you know, to this, you I, know, I later just, down the road, you know. I was just gonna say that because I was gonna say uh, the games that are announced, there's no dates for these games. They they don't talk about these games, like you said, Crackdown. They could say something about it. Where the heck is Cuphead? That's that's like my number one question. Yeah, <laughs> and there's like. All these games that they've they've talked about, Scalebound would have been another one, but um, they just there's no, you know, like updates on yeah, them. Yeah, exactly, and that's like that's like the big, the big thing, you know. And it's like Microsoft, you gotta let people know what's going on, man. <laughs> you know, you gotta let people know. You, you broke you you spoke up Cuphead. People mm -hmm. people really really want to play that game. I can't believe that. Drawn to death of all games is going to come out before Cuphead. Right. Drawn to death I tweeted was... about that. Remember? Why is that a surprise? Um, I don't. I don't understand. Like, what's the what's the <laughs> backstory know, behind that? You know, when they talked about Drawn to Death, that game was supposed to come out a long time ago. It was supposed to be a free to play. Then they turned it into an actual title where it's going to be going to be money for it. When was it originally supposed to come out? It didn't have a, a full release date. But they talked about that game at the release of the PS4, and it's coming out before Crack, uh, bef before Cuphead, and Cuphead should have <laughs> came out. No, I, I, I just sort of tweeted that out just to kind of pick on the fact that we still don't have a release date for Cuphead. Like it could have been any game. Like, hey, there's a release date. Oh, that's before Cuphead. You know, it was kind of like my way to just kind of like pick on the fact, like we still don't know when this freaking game is coming out. So, <laughs> like, it wasn't even about Drawn to Death for me personally. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was, it was in my face that day. And it was, I was like, like one of the games that we have known about forever is finally getting a release yeah. date, but this one hasn't. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. Like, how we finally have, like, a release date for Zelda, but, like, <laughs> some of these other games, like, we've known about Zelda for, like, five years. It's getting a release date with Cuphead 8. Yeah, yeah right. it's one of those type of things. <laughs> okay, I get it now. That makes sense. That's funny. But I, I'm happy that they're getting, they're about to show us what they've been working on for a while. And this is finally Phil Spencer's chance yeah. to show us what he's got. Um, I'm happy to, to see what kind of games they did. Yeah. Um, I hope the games that they bring are different and are something that the people want to play. And I'm, I'm all mm -hmm. for new IPs, man. Bring new IPs. I think uh, what they need, to, really what they really, really bleh, I can't talk, really what they need to do, they just need to change the way that they look at communication. Because I think that um, Phil Spencer does a good job at like talking back and forth with his fans on Twitter and stuff like that. But when it comes down to talking about the actual content, uh, Microsoft just has to really kind of get better at that. And it's like, 
Nintendo, one of the companies who's had a really bad thing with that too, like they're even getting better with that. So I think that um, people just kind of expect it now. Mm -hmm. Like they expect you to just give updates, even if they're small, you know, just let us know what's going on with these games that we've been looking forward to for, you know, such and such amount of time. Um, and I know that in relation to this topic, a lot of people have always been like, maybe game developers and game publishers shouldn't be, you know, announcing games so early. Maybe a lot of it is just, you know, angst because we've known about these games for so many years, you know, before maybe they even started development or, you know, they had just started development and that kind of makes people a little bit restless. I mean, what do you guys think about that perspective of it? Do you think maybe they just shouldn't announce games so early? I mean, some of these games like Scalebound, apparently like there was a lot of issues with Scalebound, but you know, they announced that game so early and a lot of people got so excited that, you know, when it came down to, um, to it, there was so many complications with Scalebound in the development phase that, you know, they ended up not even bringing it out at all. So, I mean, right. I don't know. It's, it's probably a combination of that as well. If I mean, if y'all have any thoughts, maybe y'all could chime in on that. I don't know. <laughs> that has a little to do with it. I think for me personally, I don't mind sequels getting announced, like Last of Us 2. If that doesn't come for two or three years, that's fine. Because it's like, well, I kind of knew it was going to come anyways. But when you announce like a new IP that's unproven, like Scalebound, you hype it up, you show it at E3, it doesn't look ready. That's where I kind of have a problem. It's like mm -hmm. they could have waited at least another year or two. Um, don't lead us on, especially through the holiday, this past holiday. Right. They didn't say anything. People were buying Xboxes for Christmas. Then they canceled Scalebound a couple, mm -hmm. like a month later. And it's like, to me, it's yeah. like, that's messed up. So, so it's like, don't talk about it, it if you don't know if it's like coming out or not, if it's still in the air right. or not. Right. If it's yeah. a sure thing like a God of War, a Last of Us, a Gears of War, okay, go for it. Like, let us know it's coming. But um, these new IPs, no, I, 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 I would prefer they wait. Right. See, yeah, I, I understand. I said, I said the same thing. I was like, people were like, "Oh my God, they're just gonna overuse uh, Kojima." I'm like, "No, Kojima needs to show one or two things. It didn't go dark. Don't show me nothing else until it's about time for the game to get to drop." It's certain games that I'm like, "Okay, cool. We can learn this about it, learn that about it." But don't put out a game where you know it's not ready and you're gonna have to keep pushing it back because mm -hmm. that's gonna make people restless. And not and make people not even want to get it. That's it's, true. It's cool that I understand that I would rather for it to be pushed back to not than to to not come out at all. But mm -hmm. I feel as if you know what your timetable is, and you know you 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 pretty much know what you got to do with the game. So if it's not ready, it's not ready, and you shouldn't push it out there as if it is ready. Like we like like today. No, well, not was it today? Was that was that Friday? They pushed back South Park. Man, my heart was broken, man. Like that was, that was how I was truly mad. Like I'm like, come on, man. Like that's two pushbacks. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. It was supposed to come out in December, and they showed it at E3. I was like, oh yeah, South Park, cool, cool, cool. Then they pushed it back from December till the date that they put it at. Uh, I think it was March. Then they pushed it back again. I'm like, oh my god! Like what? What is the issue? Like what's the problem? Yeah. And all the Zelda has a shook. Yeah, yeah, like, push it back. I, mean, I understand that. I, I understand that too. But I'm saying, don't even give. It, it, you wouldn't have had that problem if he would have came out in December. You wouldn't have had to work. Yeah, yeah. So when you pushed it back. You pushed it when you pushed it back. You knew Zelda was coming by then. So I don't think Zelda was the issue because they knew it was coming by then. They knew Zelda. They knew Zelda was dropping. It down. Come on, we may not know, but I know most of the developers. They they talk. Yeah, they should know. Yeah, they know when when what is dropping. Um, so I just feel like some games don't, if you ain't going to go like Fallout and you ain't going to show an E3 and come out then, just let us know in advance that it's, it's we a little far off. Like people got mad at Sony for not showing release dates for all their games. But then when they do show release dates, <laughs> I don't I mean, know, Sony, man. <sighs> it's true. I think when they don't show release dates, then you get mad when they do show release dates, but they push the game back or it gets delayed. People are mad too. Yeah. I would rather not know, to be honest. With you. Like, I would so, rather not know until like a couple of months until it's like about to come out. Pretty much. Yeah, I think a year at most. Yeah, at least a good year. 
at like the Horizon, most. we all know why Horizon got pushed back because of the pro, because they yeah. got the VR mode and all that. I had a feeling Horizon wasn't coming out uh, when I heard about the pro. I'm like, Horizon may not drop this year, but some some games don't have like those type of issues. I'm like, for real, like South Park is gonna probably look cool in 4K, but there's gotta be certain issues going on with that game for it not to be dropping when it's supposed to drop. They didn't mm. say why, like. Nope. <laughs> okay. Because it could just be because of all the games coming out. Maybe they just thought it's smart. But they knew the games was coming out beforehand. Remember? Yeah, that's what. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Unless the Switch and you know all of that was kind of a surprise. I don't know. Because I mean, we were surprised. Who knows? You know. Yeah, that may be it. I was just like, if you would have came out in December, you wouldn't have none of these issues. <laughs> that's her whole thing. <laughs> like you should have came out early. It's your <laughs> fault. <laughs> out in December and I was a little I'm just this is just me being a fan of of the game and I was I was I was ugh, I'm depressed the good man. thing is I mean you got plenty of games to distract you in the meantime very yeah good. very true that's very true yeah. Super <laughs> we're all true. good right now yeah, yeah. we're all really good you, you know it's just certain games you like like if Neo would have got Neo would have got pushed back come on you would have oh I, I wouldn't be here right now I'd be crying yeah <laughs> be you know what I'm saying so it's just a preference <laughs> Like, I know, I know. All right, well, I think that we've pretty much exhausted all of our topics. Uh, that is going to be it for today. Uh, guys, don't forget that we do have our shirt shop that is open. If you are interested in any of our shirts, make sure you go and check it out. We are at uh, spreadshirts.com slash sheattack, so go check us out there. Don't forget that we also have a Patreon. If you want to help us get our content out a little bit better with better quality, help us get you know, some better cameras and things like that when we go to events and things like that. That would be a good help for us. You know, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, or whatever you can give. That would be very helpful to us to help us to continue our uh, content. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe if you're watching this video right now and you have not yet subscribed. And all of our other social media sites will be in the description. Don't forget to check out sheattack.com. We got a lot of good content up right now. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's go ahead and get our outros out of the way. Jaleesa, go ahead and give your outro. All right, people, this is a great boss layer level um had an awesome time talking to my ladies in here and also you guys about what we're playing what's going on in the industry um give a shout out to everybody who uh has been supporting us and i'm out, I'm out. erica go ahead and give your outro yeah it was a good time good topics uh, i always enjoy hanging out with you ladies and yeah everybody watching thank you so much for the support check us out at sheattack.com we're gonna be covering all things switch all things ps4 everything we can we're just uh you know trying to work hard over here for you guys so, yeah <laughs> thanks again for sure as you guys know it is Leah pierce editor-in-chief at sheattack.com thank you guys again for watching this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a, a share and we'll talk to you guys later on the next episode of boss lair peace <laughs>